Defiance Church in Hoosick Falls. And for those who are gathered, it's wonderful to see you. For those that are at home, our live stream is active right now. So hopefully there's some joining in uh, from home. Uh, we're thinking about uh, God's work in our lives today, that he uh, pours strength and power into our lives. And what a great message that is for us in these days of difficulty and trial. If you're able to uh, rise to your feet, uh, why don't you stand? And our first song is taken from Isaiah 40. That is the focus of our study in the Word today. Everlasting God. Father God, we thank you that you choose to share your strength and power with us, Lord, that you pour your strength and power into our lives, and we just open our hearts and our lives to you today, and we ask, Father, that you fill us afresh and anew, that you'd fill us to overflowing, God, and that you would just do that work of transformation as we are before you in worship and praise and adoration, Lord, as we're in your presence, Lord that you would make us more like Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for this day and the freedom we have to be gathered in the name of Jesus, our Savior, and we give you worship and thanks in his holy name. Amen. Friends, you can be free, seated. If you're remaining in your seats, you're welcome to take your mask off. If you get up to move around, if you don't mind just putting it on. We're going to use the Pew Bibles 
Uh, I encourage you to turn to page 600. And if you're not using the Pew Bibles, if you'd kindly turn to Isaiah chapter 40. I began my ministry in the Alliance at Parkside Bible Church in Watertown, New York. Started in March of 94. Got myself settled in in the year 94. And then in uh, 1995, as I was getting uh, plugged into not only my local church uh, in, in Watertown, but also the district, I was informed early in 95 that in the summer of 95, I was going to be making a trip out to Colorado Springs for the new workers orientation retreat. They have a name for it now, but they just called it for what it was. <clears throat> so uh, district paid for part of it, the church paid for part of it, and I was so blessed to go out for four or five days. <clears throat> and I went to Glen Erie. Glen, G-L-E-N, is a name for like a, a valley, narrow valley. And Erie is a name for eagle's nests, raptor's nests. <clears throat> and Glen Erie was uh, built... Uh, by uh, General Parker, the founder of Colorado Springs, like 1870. And uh, I forget exactly when, but it, it ended up being in the hands of the Navigators uh, Christian Ministry. Navigators is a, a ministry that has had uh, impact on campuses and military posts around the world. Bill Bright uh, is a name that you might know, the four spiritual laws uh, that uh, he, he codified uh, as a tool for witnessing. Just an absolutely gorgeous retreat center. Now, I didn't stay in the main castle. Uh, we were uh, shoved off to another spot, but we had our, our meetings and our meals here. So I flew out of uh, Syracuse, New York, and arrived in Colorado Springs. Uh, I think it was on a Monday. Uh, the, the retreat was going to start Monday night, and so I got my stuff into my room, I was there before any other uh, uh, conference attendees were around, and I didn't see any alliance leaders. And so I thought, I had a gorgeous day. I'll just start heading up into the hills. And uh, it's quite a, quite a sight once you get to the very top of the glen and can look out over, uh, over you can see, uh, that's Colorado Springs, the city in the distance. And uh, this rock formation here, kind of in the center uh, right, is called the Garden of the Gods. And uh, just an incredible geological formation. But the beautiful uh, land mass was not the only thing that I saw that just made me catch my breath. <clears throat> As I climbed the hills, again, this retreat center was called Glen Airy. It's the valley, uh, the gorge of the eagle's nest. And the thing that I saw were golden eagles. As I climbed the hills, I saw these amazing birds in flight. And I've always loved eagles, you know, they're just amazing birds. The last uh, uh, eight or ten years now in our vacation to Maine, uh, the pond that we're on, Whitney Pond in Oxford, Maine, uh, has uh, been host to bald eagles, uh, the first Many years that I was going, they weren't around, but they've come back in, and uh, to see them swoop down and grab a fish, uh, just, uh, it's incredible. See them soaring in the sky. Just look at the curvature of the wings there. You know, flight is an amazing thing, isn't it? I mean, flight is just incredible. It's, uh, preparation for the message today, I did look at, and I was uh, decided not to spend much time on, but I just thought about the, the Wright brothers and uh, a powered flight, and all, all the testing they did, and all the work and design, and uh, flight, flight's just an amazing, anybody here dream of flying? Anybody ever have dreams where you're flying? Those are dreams especially that I never want to end. I just, when, when I have those dreams, and I've only had them a few times in my life, but when I've had dreams that I was flying, I just like, oh, morning, don't come, don't come, don't end this kind of that self-awareness in the middle of the dream. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> eagles are just incredible animals, and there's lots of uh, things. I encourage you to look them up on the web and just see and study 
uh, the, the truths that are, that are knit into nature by our designer God, our creator God. And he likens us to being like eagles. And, and that's, that's something we need to, to really grab hold of in these days of darkness and trial. I just want to encourage us from the word of God. So Isaiah uh, 40, verse 27. Let me just pray for our time in the word before we dive in. Gracious God, mighty King, we just thank you for your love towards us. And God, that you say things about us in the word that should really define our reality. You say things about us and it should define our self-awareness and our self-understanding. And God, I've admitted um, from this pulpit many times that sometimes my self-awareness, my self-understanding is very negative. But God, you say incredibly positive things about me. And sometimes I've foolishly sinned and allowed my poor opinion of myself to trump your truth, God. It is sin of the foolishest kind. And I admit it, Lord, please have mercy on me, Lord. Enlighten my heart and mind as we spend time in the Word. And I pray for my church family that this scripture would just pop off the page. This scripture that many of these dear folk have read and reread and read again. Lord, would you make it new today? Would you infuse it with life? God, we love you. And pray that you would just speak a fresh word to us today from the scriptures. And this we ask, Father, in, in the name of the living word, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Isaiah 40, I'm going to start in verse 27, okay? Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord, that's all capitals, Yahweh, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And again, an amen for God's word. Isn't that an incredible passage? Hallelujah. So let's, let's think about this for a few moments. First thing we need to understand is the context of the end of chapter 40, and the context of the end of chapter 40 is the beginning and middle of chapter 40, right? So what does chapter 40 tell us? We've studied it before. Uh, the early verses talk about uh, God's desire that his people would be comforted. It's part of the Messiah, comfort ye my people, okay? That God has promised good things uh, to, to his people. So that, that's the opening of the... Um, uh, the, the, the chapter, uh, God wants to, his people to be spoken to tenderly because he cares about them. <clears throat> and then it goes into a section on God's word, uh, that God's word is going to last forever. Other things will fade away, uh, but God's word stands eternal. And then the next big portion of the chapter is all about God's greatness. And I encourage you when you have time, uh, read, read that middle portion uh, from, uh, say, verses uh, uh, 9 through 26. Um, read that. And the last part says this, lift up your, your eyes on high and see who created these things, who brings out their host by number. That's talking about all the stars of the universe, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Okay. That's the lead-in to verse 27. And then the prophet says, Why do you, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from Yahweh. My right is disregarded by my God. Have you felt at all during this pandemic and this lockdown, like, Man, where's God in this? Life is, life is terrible. Life stinks. Have you, have you felt, wondered, like, 
man, is, is, is God just going to abandon us? I hope not. I hope not. But it, it, it's a natural human response when bad things happen and they keep on happening to, to be discouraged, to despair. <clears throat> but the prophet challenges Israel in light of all that he had just said about the greatness of God and his power and his might and his ability to hold things, all things in his hand that we should not have this thought in terms of God not caring for us. We need to understand who our God is. Look again at verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Again, the question is, do you understand the God that you're connected to? Do you understand who he is who's called you into this love relationship? It says the Lord, again, capitals, it's Yahweh, his proper name. The Lord is the everlasting God. That should give us hope, friends, in that God's been around for a while. Okay? These things that we're going through, I'll be 59 this year, I've never been through times like this before. Okay? As long as I've lived, I've read about the Depression, you know, the Great Depression, World War I, World War II. I've heard about times that were significant and, and, and harsh but I, up to this point, had never lived through them. I had ups and downs like everybody, but nothing like this. But our God is everlasting. Hey, this is his not, not his first rodeo, okay? He understands. He's been around. He's everlasting. That, that term itself is hard for us in our finite capacity to understand that going infinitely backward in times, God is. And going infinitely forward in time, God is. He, he is infinite, pushing both ends of the spectrum. He, he is everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, so says Psalm 90, verse 2. Okay. Be encouraged, friends. Be comforted that the God who loves you and cares about you, where is God in all this? God is very much in this, friends, and he's an everlasting God. And he's the creator God. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. It talked about in that verse 26 before 27 started that he, he, has, he has put all the stars in the sky and called them each by name. By his might and power they exist. He spoke it into being. There are no building blocks in the creative process. There are no Legos or rector, erector set to start with. He just spoke and it became. That's the God who loves you. He created everything. Look around. Look around today. We have a beautiful, warm, sunny summer day. Look at the trees. Look at the bushes. Look at the grasses. See the birds flying in the air, the clouds drifting by. God made it all. Is helping us in our time of need hard for him? No. He's the one who spoke the universe into being. He does not faint or grow weary. Friends, park yourself in this truth that God's strength and resources are unlimited. I'm preaching mainly to myself today because I'm tired. I'm weary, okay? It's been a long siege of trying to push through this pandemic stuff. When it first started and we were just recording sermons, you know, I'd sit at my desk and, and try and prepare sermons, and I just felt like I was, I was walking through mud chest deep. But just like every step forward, it just was a battle. I'm weary. And if for no one else, this message today is for me. I take comfort, and I am encouraged, and I have courage because the word of God, which I've known to be true all my adult life, says that my God does not get tired. Hallelujah. Our God does not grow weary. He does not falter. He does not slow down. He presses on and he presses in because he's God. Hallelujah. The God who loves you, the God who's called you to, to relationship is all-powerful. 
He's all powerful. The verse from Isaiah that we, uh, Jeremiah that we sing sometimes, nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing, nothing, absolutely. We, we, some message recently I quoted that, right? That great old chorus. Name something. Nope, it's not too hard for God. Name something else. Oh, that's not hard either. He's all powerful. He is God. Unsearchable understanding. In my weariness, as I look at the world, I'm like, how is this, how, how and when is this going to get better? I just wonder. I can't figure it out. I think about it a lot, concerned for myself and my family and for my church family and for my country and my world. I can't figure it out. Not too hard for God. He's not only all-powerful, omnipotent, he's omniscient. He knows everything. His smartness, again, when we think about him being eternal, our finite minds can't really begin to fully ever grasp that. Well, his smartness, again, (laughs) is just my brain is so tiny, I can't, we can't begin to understand the knowledge of our God. God knows. God understands. God has a plan, friends. I feel like I'm out there just kind of flapping in the wind at times. Not our God. He's building his kingdom. He's advancing the cause of Christ. He's on the job, friends. He's at task. Be encouraged as you look at the character of the Almighty. Be encouraged. He gives power to the faint and strength to the weak. I mean, it's one thing for God to have all these amazing attributes... But if he's a stingy God and he keeps it to himself, where does that leave us? Well, it's great that he's all-powerful. It's great that he's omniscient and he understands everything. But if he doesn't share, then we're still up a creek without a paddle. But again, look at the character of our God. Is that the God with whom we have to do? Is that the God that we're in relationship with? I'm asking directly, and that's not a rhetorical question. Is that our God? The answer is what? No. God's not stingy. He's not going to keep it to himself. We are his sons and daughters. We who've asked Jesus into our heart as Lord and Savior, we're his children. The Gospels, Jesus says, you, you know how to good gi- give good, good gifts, you're broken, broken parents. How much more so does our God give good gifts? He loves us. He shares his person with us. He gives, he gives his strength. He gives his understanding. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life of Christ is in us. We who've asked Jesus to be Lord and Savior, that Jesus comes to dwell in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can live out of Jesus' strength. We can live out of Jesus' life as we continue to yield and surrender. Back to Romans 12.1, be a living sacrifice. You die to self, and the life of Jesus comes to the fore. It comes to the front. Strength. Oh, hallelujah. I feel so weak. But I don't have to trust in my resources. God is going to give me strength in my lack. Youth is no guarantee. I want to speak to the young people here. I'm going to be 59. I told you that just a moment ago. I'm going to be 59. A lot of times I I think I'm still 18. Uh, Nope. I'm getting old. 
Boyce hates it when I talk, talk about getting old. We're not old. Oh, okay, yeah. We're old. <laughs> you young folk, you just think you're invincible, indestructible, you know? You can do it all. Well, keep thinking that. God bless you, you know? But uh, the fact of the matter is that youth is no guarantee. Even young people will grow tired and weary. Even youths shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted. Now, you have to be taxed a little more than me. I admit that, okay? But it's no guarantee. That brings us to the heart of the study, this amazing verse of Scripture that is a favorite of many of ours. We're told to wait on Yahweh, okay? What does Scripture say? Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on the wicked as a cut off. Now, in some places, uh, the NIV translates this uh, Hebrew word as hope. This is an expectant waiting. This is not a discouraged, downhearted, downhearted waiting. We know the character of our God. We know he's going to move. He's going to act. So we wait. Waiting is hard. Patience is hard. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? Something that God has to work in many of us. because We're not wired that way naturally. Wait for the Lord. Those, the blessing that's being detailed here in this verse of Scripture is not for everybody. It says, they who wait, those who wait upon the Lord will experience these things. Uh, the Lord shall do this work, okay? Uh, but they who wait on the, uh, for the Lord shall renew their strength. The Lord shall renew their strength. He's the one active in doing this wor- work. Again, I don't have enough strength in myself. This is something that God does for us. Take encouragement from that, that God's active in this the word for renew, a uh, lovely uh, Hebrew word. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and it is renewed in the evening it fades and withers. Okay, just this idea of God refreshing, replenishing. Listen to me, O lands. This is uh, a little later in Isaiah. He uses the same word. Listen to me in silence, O coastlands. Let the people renew their strength. Okay, this is something that were challenged to be active and renew their strength. Um, the word for strength is uh, used in scripture of Samson. Uh, and the lords of the Philistines came to Delilah and said to her, seduce him and see where his great strength lies. You'll remember that story. Uh, from the book of Judges, that God had endued him, empowered him with amazing strength. Same word used that we will gain strength as we wait on God. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity. Scripture says that our, our level of strength can be diminished because of sin in our lives. Be careful how you live, friend. God has resources for you, but uh, you can lose uh, that access to resources. Then we're called to mount up. This means to go up, to ascend, to climb. Jeremiah says this, Behold, one shall mount up and fly swiftly like an eagle and spread his wings against Bozrah. The hearts of the warriors of Edom shall be in that day like the heart of a woman in her birth pains. A couple places in Scripture we're told to mount up with wings as eagles. So what's the application of Isaiah 40, uh, 31? I think part of it is that we need to gain perspective. Again, we're enmeshed in the middle, in the midst of a global pandemic that's uh, been causing all kinds of havoc. The fact of the matter is that eagles will fly high over the storm. A lot of birds will just take shelter when the storm comes. Eagles oftentimes will just use the force of the wind 
to climb. And something that's amazing to see is that a lot of times they're in the air for long periods of time without ever flapping a wing. Okay? Was, remember that picture of the, uh, the broad wings of the golden eagle in one of the first pictures. Eagles will find thermals. They'll find these columns of hot air that is rising and they'll head into them and they'll just circle around and they'll just fly higher and higher and higher without breaking a sweat. God's designed them in such a way that they just ride the wind. It says that we are to mount up with wings as eagles. Okay? We need to spread our wings and fly. And when we do, we will rise high. The other thing is, is that eagles are uh, famous for having incredible sight. Uh, I've seen turkey vultures around here um, flying high. Uh, and uh, they use the olfactory sense, uh, smell, to zero in on what they're, they're going to get. Um, but eagles use keen eyesight. And eagles fly typically higher than most any other bird. Okay. And from a high height, what do you get? You get perspective. You see a a bigger picture. Think of yourself when you've traveled in a modern airplane at 37,000 feet cruising altitude. Okay. Did the world look much different to you then? Yes, it did. Okay. So a couple things here is that uh, in Scripture, it says that we are seated in the heavenly realms beside Christ. We're seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. There is a resource available to us to see the big picture of life. Okay? When we're in the heavenly realms with Jesus, we get the whole picture. As I have been discouraged at times during the lockdown, as it's been hard for me, <clears throat> I've, I've said, Lord, help me get perspective. Lord, help me see the big picture. And, and God's spiritually reminded me of being with Jesus in the heavenlies by his side to see that things may have shut down, stopped, ceased totally in my little part of the world, but God's kingdom was not, was not in neutral. God's kingdom was still advancing. The other thing is, is that having keen eyesight that we have a lofty position that gives us the ability to see the big picture and gain perspective, but then we think wisely about what we see. Okay? But it says also in the New Testament that we can have the mind of Christ. I admitted earlier that I can't make sense of a lot what's happening right now. I don't know the answers to get us out of this, but Jesus knows I can have the mind of Christ. I've been praying actively, God, give me wisdom to know what to do and how to do it. In terms of having keen eyesight, you guys know that when I take these off, you're pretty blurry. <laughs> I need help. I need help because my eyes don't work right. I am nearsighted, and I have uh, where the lens is. Stigmatism, thank you very much. I have that too. Scripture says that we walk by what? Faith, not by sight. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight. So there's this seeing that goes beyond the, the physical realm. Back to Resurrection Sunday this year. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul's prayer for the church. Pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened. We walk by faith, not by sight. That there is spiritual sight. <clears throat> We're seated in the heavenly realms with Christ. We can have the mind of Christ to think wisely about what we see. And we see clearly because we see with the eyes of faith. We see with our heart.
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Fly high, friends, and get the big picture. And see clearly what the lay of the land is. We need to run and not grow weary. Again, I, I, I talked about just feeling like I was chest deep in the bog, just slugging through the, the, the sludge and muck. Hebrews 12.1 says this, Therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, and let us what? Run with endurance the race that is set before us. This verse, I believe, is talking about ministry. What is the the race that God has before each of us as believers? Well, it's to live a life that's glorifying to him. It's to live a life that honors him by what we think, say, and do. It's about being engaged in ministry in some capacity. Every one of us has been given a gift by God Almighty, and we need to share that gift with the world, either in the body or outside of the body. Run the race with endurance. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. Paul says this in Galatians, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will, we will reap if we do not give up. George Whitfield, the great preacher of the uh, Great Awakening, said near the end of his life, I am weary in but not weary of the Lord's work. I am weary in but not weary of the Lord's work. Man, some of those great saints, they preached all the time. I read about their lives and I get tired just reading about them. You know, they'd have services every night for weeks on end. I'm like, oh, man, I would just be a wreck. I preach once a week, and I'm tired, you know. They just, he said, I'm, I'm not weary of ministry, but I am tired in ministry. And Paul says in here that we should not grow weary. Now, if growing weary wasn't a possibility, he wouldn't have said anything about it, friends. Don't grow weary. Don't be discouraged. Don't be beat down. Look up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming back soon, friends. Don't grow weary. Run the race that's set before you. I believe that's talking about ministry plans that God has for you to walk in. Walk and not faint. We're almost to the end here, friends. Keep with me. Deuteronomy says this, So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by what? Walking in his ways and by fearing him. And again in uh, verse 10, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Run and not grow weary. Walk and not faint. Walk in the ways of the king. Be doing the things that God tells you to do. He's said so much to us in his word. Just live it out. Live it out. God will bless it. God will anoint it. God will prosper it in your lives. Entitled the message today, Taking Flight. Are you feeling like me? Are you dragging your feet as you move through life. Take flight, friends. Spread your, spread your wings. A little bit of flapping needed maybe to get off the ground, but you watch those eagles, man, they'll, they'll take a few big, powerful swings, and then they're just floating on air. They, sp- they spread their wings, and, and you don't see them move, sometimes for minutes and minutes at a time. They just ride that rising air. God's love is beneath you. God's support is beneath you. Fly. Fly high. 
couple popular songs come to mind as we close. Stephen uh, Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle. Great guitarist, Steve Miller. I can't uh, play music like I used to as part of the service because uh, you can't have canned music and broadcast that. But just those of you old folk who know the song, think about it. <clears throat> One of the phrases he says is, um, fly like an eagle uh, to the sea, fly like an eagle, let my spirit carry me. And I could preach that biblically in terms of my spirit carrying me, that I'm going to make the choice, I'm going to decide to just continue to press on into God. But as I've heard that song through my adult life, I think, no, I don't want the spirit to carry me. I want his spirit to carry me. Okay. Which brings me to uh, another song. I've done a lot of funerals and probably one of the most often chosen songs by family and friends to be played at funerals, at least that I've led, I've heard many times Bette Midler's Wind Beneath My Wings. And that's referring to somebody else in life and honoring them, and it's a beautiful song and so wonderful to be part of funeral services. Uh, it's meaningful to me every time I've been a part of a funeral service and it's been used. And I can say, in terms of my wife and my family, and I can say of you, in all honesty, I just want to honor you, that, that you are the wind beneath my wings. You support, you encourage, you uplift. And that role, you know, again, I'm just blessed. I'm familiar. I have friends who I know who are in ministry settings that are antagonistic, that are, that are conflicted. I'm just so blessed that you guys love me and care about me. As much as I want to say that, and I do say that of you, even more importantly, as I think about this song, I think about Jesus being the wind beneath my wings. Again, my wife, my family, you guys, you are so important in embodying Jesus to be the wind beneath my wings. But there are ways that Jesus and Jesus alone is the wind beneath our wings. This is practically perfect as Lois is, as wonderful as my family is, as wonderful as you are, you're going to let me down sometime. I'm going to let you down. Jesus will never let us down. He is the wind beneath our wings. Again, as I was studying uh, this week, there's just so many unique characteristics about eagles facts, facets of what they are like as animals, part of God's created order. Could just spend all morning having, uh, could have spent all morning just focusing on that. But one, one new insight that I gained this week that I hadn't known before, I just want to uh, share this final quote. S person writing about uh, raptors, about hawks, says they have at least one singular characteristic. It's been observed that most birds of prey look back over their shoulders before striking prey or shortly thereafter. Predation is, after all, a two-edged sword. What does that mean? It means I may be a predator, but there's always a bigger predator right behind me. I may be a shark. There's a bigger shark out there. Okay? Predation is, after all, two-edged sore. All hawks seem to have this habit, from the smallest kestrel to the largest phrygonus, but not the eagles. So what the, this biologist is saying is that when we see red-tailed hawks here in the valley and they're spinning around and they swoop down and they grab a field mouse out of the field, before they hit that mouse, they're just looking just to see what might be out there. Eagles are apex predators. They're at the top of the food chain. They don't worry about nothing, friends. 
There's nothing out there that they have to be concerned about. When they swoop down and grab a fish, they're just looking at the fish. They're not checking over their shoulders. They're not worried about anything but accomplishing the task. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. There is this word picture drawn for us in Scripture today that says that we can be like the eagle. I want to encourage you, friend, attack life like nothing can get you. Attack life like you have Jesus on your side. I have quoted again and again because it just sticks with me and it comes to me often in my life. That silly kids movie, Beethoven. Big, huge, slobbering St. Bernard. And that scrawny little kid facing his bullies down. And they take off for the hills. And he goes home and takes off his shirt and he flexes. And he is, he is like 70 pounds of nothing. He is just skin and bones. He's nothing. And those bullies had taken off. Why? Because very silently, Beethoven had crept up behind him and bared his teeth. And off those bullies go. Friends, attack life like you don't have to worry because you have a wingman named Jesus and he's conquered death and hell. Our greatest enemies, our greatest foe, he's already conquered them. Go for it. You're like an eagle. Spread your wings and fly. Ride the Spirit's movement. As that wind blows, Jesus, John chapter 3, talking to Nicodemus, he likens the wind to the move of the Spirit of God. Find the thermals. Find that place where the work of God is rising. And, just, and when you're up there, get the big perspective. See with eyesight that's keen. Think wisely about what you see because you have the mind of Christ. You're seated beside Christ. You have the mind of Christ and you have the eyes of faith to see clearly. God's resources are available for us in this time of trial and struggle. Be strong in the strength of the Lord. I've come to the end of myself, friends. I'm empty. But I got Jesus. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. Live the Jesus life through your life. Be strengthened. Run hard. Fly high. That is God's purpose and plan for us today. I want to pray as we close our time in the Word. Bow your heads and open your hearts, please. Father God, we are so grateful that when you call us to co-labor with you, you don't expect us to have to do it all out of our own resources. When you call us to be involved in building your kingdom, Lord, your plan and purpose is to pour your Spirit's power into our heart and life. Ephesians 1, Lord, eyes of our heart open. We understand the riches of your inheritance and saints, the, um, the hope of your calling and the surpassing greatness of your power toward us who believe. That same power you used to raise Jesus from the dead. Resurrection power is available right here and right now, Lord. And we embrace it for our lives. Lord, help us to soar. Lord, when we feel like we can't flap much longer, God, help us to find that rising air, to rise above the storm. 
God, you're good, and we worship you. We thank you for being all-powerful, all-knowing, and for being everlasting. Thank you for your word. Bless us as we continue in our service. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple quick announcements as we uh, move forward. Uh, there are some uh, vegetables that the Wargos have um, harvested and uh, they've brought here. And my guess is that they were careful to uh, wash their hands before picking. Um, so if you uh, feel safe in doing so, as you go out, uh, grab some uh, bounty. We have a board meeting uh, tomorrow night that will be in person and via Zoom. Um, we covet your prayers. Continue to try and uh, tweak the hybrid meetings in terms of people being able to hear each other here and the people at home being able to hear. Um, just part of the learning curve. It's frustrating. So I appreciate prayer uh, for our meeting that we would uh, make wise choices with regard to our fellowship, but if you can pray about the technical aspect, I appreciate that. Uh, that's all I have. Does anybody have any other announcements? Um, today, <coughs> yes? Thank you. If uh, those of you who are watching live now, you can't do so, um, but uh, we'll try and I'll, I'll put an email out for the uh, body to know. <clears throat> but if you were to watch this recording um, after the service is done and it's been then uploaded as a saved uh, program file, um, that there's a spot on YouTube that you can click on closed captioning and um, uh, it, it is going to close caption this service for us. It's just so cool that they do that. Um, so if you have trouble with the audio at, at any time, uh, just a note that you can hear that. Gail? Okay. We're praying for the Bosnian team um, that COVID has hit uh, that area. Uh, we have um, heard that um, Mark and Kathy are safely um, in uh, Rome, New York, and we will see Kathy this fall. So. Anything else? All right, um, for uh, our offering time, I'm gonna invite the worship team up, and um, if you don't mind donning your masks, if you'd like to sing with us, the words will be on the screen. Um, if you just wanna listen and enjoy and worship uh, silently, that's fine. Uh, if you do, do bring your offering up um, during this time, then um, uh, again, if you don't mind just having your mask on. Uh, this song is uh, everlasting, and, and Isaiah uh, 40 reminded us that uh, our God is everlasting. Thank you. 
Prayer, and um, if you have uh, personal prayer needs, as Chuck is leading us in, in uh, pastoral prayer, you're welcome to come forward, and I'll pray with anyone who needs prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are God, and we're here to wait on you, and you give us that strength, Lord. We just pray for that now. We just want to thank you for the message, and we think about waiting on you, and you're going to renew us and give us strength. We just pray for our congregation Lord, for each one, Lord, here and at home, that you would just give each one the strength, Lord, that comes from you as we live through this pandemic time, Lord. And we do want to lift up just some of those out there. We think of uh, the Edson family, Lord. I just pray for them. We don't know their estate at this moment, Lord, but pray would you be with them. And I just think of Ted and Kathy, Lord, and what they go through. I pray for them. And Linda and Jerry, Lord, we lift them up. Just pray that you'd be with them, Lord. We just know you want to touch each one of these, Lord, as they live for you. And just any other concerns, Lord, we want to lift before you. We know there's uh, families taking care of elderly fathers, Lord, and we just lift them up as well, Lord. Pray that you'd minister to them and encourage them. Lord, and we want to thank you that the ICOFs made it safely from Bosnia, Lord, but we pray for the team there, Lord, as uh, the COVID-19 is in their area, Lord. We pray for safety for the missionaries and for the ones that they've reached out to, those that love you, Lord. We just pray for them. Pray for others that in this time of need, they would just reach out and find your word, Lord. Find the gospel and find Jesus, Lord. And we just, it's all about Jesus, Lord. We want to lift that up to you. We pray for our other missionaries worldwide, Lord, international workers, wherever they are, that you would just be with them, encourage them in this time as many countries are shut down and they um, are basically bound there, Lord. We just lift them up to you. Pray that they would be encouraged as they work there, Lord. And for our community, Lord, we just pray that we could be um, the arms and feet of Jesus to help people here, Lord, that need a touch from you. We lift up those that work right here in our local village, Lord. We pray for those in our state. Uh, just pray that you'd watch over these people, Lord. And I think of many from our area, Lord, that um, have a vacation planned or something going on this summer, Lord, or try to travel, Lord, and all these things that are affecting that, Lord. We just pray for just renewed strength that you are in control, Lord. We just lift that up to you. We just want to thank you for who you are. We just want to praise your name in this time, Lord, and just lift our praise up to you, Jesus, because you care for us, and you are concerned for each and every one, and you're ever willing and ever waiting to hear from us, Lord. Just help us to think that way, that we can call on you at each and every second of the day, Lord. Again, we want to thank you for all that's going on. We thank you that your word's gone forth today, not only here right here in the sanctuary to those of us that are here, but also across the airwaves to those at home and around the world that may tune in, Lord. We just pray that this would be another opportunity for your word to go forth. We lift that up to you, Lord. We do want to just lift up our governing meeting tomorrow, Lord. Just pray for your direction, your guidance, as we consider the things of our church that are going on here and areas that need to be addressed, Lord. We just pray for unity for the, the governing board members, Lord. We just pray for all these things and other things throughout the week that get together, Lord. We just lift them up to you. Pray for your guidance and direction, and we know that you want to be a part of it if we invite you to be so, Lord. Help us to remember that, because we want to live for you in all that we do. Just pray for the service now, Lord. Just pray that we would remember these thoughts as we think about, even as we leave this place, we live in a place where we can see an eagle or a red-tailed hawk flying, that we would just think about that power that you can give to us, that resurrection power, Lord. If we just wait upon you. I want to thank you for this time now. In Jesus' name, amen.
you're able to rise to your feet, we'll sing our final song. It too is um, so um, so drawn from Isaiah uh, 40, uh, 31, and uh, in terms of uh, rising on eagle's wings, the, the prayer, the desire of the chorus, come live in me, uh, all my life take over, just that yielding and surrendering once again to God, Romans 12, Galatians 2.20, we've talked about so often lately because God had us, has us parked in that reality that we need to die to self and allow the life of Christ to live in us.
Father, we believe that we will rise as you breathe in us, as you pour your spirit upon us. Father, we believe that we will rise because you desire us to soar like eagles. Father, we embrace flight. Lord, the times I've dreamed about flying have been so cool, God. And physically, that's not something I'm built to do. But spiritually, Lord, you plan for each of us to rise high. Help us, God, to fly over the storm of life right now. Help us to be seated in the heavenly realms with Christ. From that lofty vantage point, Lord, with the eyes of faith to see clearly what the big picture is. And finally, with the mind of Christ to think wisely about what we see. Pour strength into us, Lord, into these weary limbs. Help us to run and not grow weary, to walk in your ways and not faint. Help us not to grow weary in well-doing, God, but to press in and press on into the ministry you have for each of one of us, God, the giftedness that you've poured into each of us, Lord, that we would express that in some meaningful way. Help us to rise like the eagle, Lord. We love you, gracious God, that gives of himself his character, his person, who you are, that you don't grow weary, you do not tire, you do not cease, you press on, because you are God and King, and we follow in your train. Lord, help us to run well the race you have planned for each of us. Thank you for this wonderful time together. Bless those at home. Bless us now as we head to our homes. We bow our hearts before our King Jesus, and in his name we give you praise. Amen. God bless you as you go, friends. Thank you for being here.